All righty, and um, we have $50 from Prevent, no, Pentavalent Carbon, who says, Stupendous MMX race. x one was one of my favorite games for the SNES, and it's amazing to see it and its successors demolished so thoroughly. Let's defeat the Maverick cells of their cancer and 600K hype. Indeed it is. And let's get hype even more, because coming up next, we're going to continue this amazing Mega Man block with my man Slurpy Ninja in his run of Mega Man 10. Everybody in the room, let's get hype for Mega Man 10 by Slurpy Ninja. Let's go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the uh -oh. new Classic Mega Tonight here with Mega Man 10 with our boy, Slurpy Ninja. Hey. So yeah, we're leading, leading base normal for this run. And uh, the run is going to start on Commander Man. Timing is going to start once I select Commander Man's base. So uh, let's uh, first I'll like, introduce my couch here, I guess. We got Crack Attack, we got Zero Blade Edge, uh, Princess Proto, and Zelo. So. And, and the good boy. Yeah, I'm only here to hold the gator and yell at Slurpee very lovingly. <laughs> and, uh, and absolutely, like, yell, yell away, for sure. And, uh, yeah, uh, countdown. I'm gonna start this up. So, three, two, two. one, let's go. Woo! So this is Mega Man 10. It was released in 2010. I'm just checking the layout because I had the fact wrong. Oh. Um, sort of a modern reimagining of classic Mega Man. We're going to be starting with Commando Man. Uh, this is one of, I think, three routes that are um, relatively common for this game. The original route for base was chill first. Uh, this was so that we could get to uh, Nitro as fast as possible and get the, uh, uh, the wheel cutter. Um, however, we're actually going to be going Commando first because of just how fast you can kill Commando Man, allowing us to get the triple blade earlier as well. And it pretty much balances out. Yeah, and a lot of the movement in this stage is done by the uh, the sand moving back and forth. Some sand moves left, some sand moves right. Um, it speeds up and slows us down. And another reason we want to do Commando Man first, like you said, is the triple blade, um, which is our big weapon uh, to deal damage with in this run. You'll see him go above the sand. Even though it's going left and he's going up in uh, what's called uh, triple mode, he's still maintaining the same normal speed without getting slowed down because he's above the sand's hitbox. Here, He's going to slide and try to keep up with the sand. If he does get in the sand, it's going to push him forward faster and increase his speed. And we're already at the boss. Um, so the important thing to know with this fight is that when Commando Man is in the air, he has no iframe. So we're going to be able to deal tons and tons of damage with base's rapid fire buster. So we want to be seeing jumps. Uh, Commando Man is sort of cooperating, being a little finicky. And he can also slam down like that and deal damage to you. And that's, and that's one. And I wanted to finish the fight in the middle of the stage so that I don't have to walk back to it. Right. So one thing we should probably talk about is the difference between base and the Mega Man you may be familiar with. So base does not have a slide. Instead, base has a dash. Um, in addition, base can rapid fire buster in seven directions instead of charging. Uh, meanwhile, Slurpee is switching controllers here because <laughs> that's how high of a level he's on right now. He has two different controllers to use throughout the run. Um, instead of having Rush Coil and Rush Jet, base has the treble uh, adapter suit. Adapter, yes. It's like the jet suit in Mega Man 6 in that you can use it to sort of float through the air. And next, we're heading to Blade Man. Uh, we're going to be going more or less in weakness order throughout this run. After this, I believe that we're going to be going to Chill Man to fight with the Buster, because, again, we want to get Wheel Cutter and Triple Blade as soon as possible. And another thing that you'll see later in this run is, uh, unlike Mega Man 9, this uh, newer classic Mega has quick weapon swapping. So you'll be seeing what we call weapon canceling. And that's uh, where um, you fire a weapon and say the triple blade, one of the triple blades goes off screen, you can actually quickly switch back to Buster, fire a shot off for one damage, and then go back to the triple blade really quickly mm -hmm. in order to do the two to three damage that you would do. Now, this mini boss is like Commando Man. We don't have iframes, but the mechanic is we want to uh, jump at the higher points because with no iframes, we jump up, more damage dealt. Mm -hmm. And that was a really, really good fight. I like how there's a castle in a castle. Hmm? Uh, there's a turn yeah. castle, yeah. <laughs> It's Castleception. <laughs> so actually, the reason that I switched controllers is that my other controller is slightly broken, so the up button will actually push to the left. But I need, um, I need to have Commando Bomb 
fire without me moving? Yes, uh, Commando Bomb, we forgot to talk about that. So Commando Bomb, you can fire it straight, but you also have a two directional input after that. So you can fire it in front of you, make it go up and then straight back into that line or come back around uh, above you. So we're gonna use that, abuse that in this fight. We're gonna have uh, Blade Man try to stick to the wall as much as possible and come down on the ground. We also don't want the actual bomb to hit him except for, ju for just that one, but after that we wanna hit it below or above him so that the uh, explosion comes out and hits him and deals more damage. Blade Man is not cooperating, but it's okay. I actually ran out of Commando Bomb. <laughs> yeah, weapon ammo is pretty tight in this game, especially with Commando Bomb. You do not have a lot of shots with that one, so you want to be very, very careful with them. Um, I don't think we ever actually directly referenced, um, you just explained Commando Bomb. Let's talk about the Triple Blade, actually. I was about to repeat something. It's kind of <laughs> late. No big deal. Uh, so the Triple Blade, as the name implies, it's three blades. You're going to see a nice little demo of it right here. What's really neat about the Triple Blade is that it can actually sort of bypass iframes in that you can hit with two or three blades at once. In order to hit with three, you need to be really, really close to the enemy. If you're a little too far away, you'll hit with two which is still a lot more damage than you typically get with just standard, you know, stock one hit to iframes. Next, we're heading into Chill Man stage. Chill Man, as a reminder, objectively the best robot master because he was developed to help fight global warming. And like also, which, uh, when she was talking about the, uh, the triple blade flying off the screen, that's where the weapon canceling mechanic comes in that you'll be seeing actually a lot in the refights later. Mm -hmm. um, so triple blade actually one shots these ice blocks, which um, in an older route, we would have water shield here or at least I would, <laughs> um, to get through these quickly. But the Commando Bomb and the Triple Blade actually goes through them very quickly. Um, also, shout-outs to Snowmen. Shout-outs to Snowmen. And these uh, little Susies. They're actually more manageable in this game. Um, so what he just picked up is a weapon tank. Obviously, refills at least one, or one weapon back to full. Yeah, small movement with base, especially, you know, on the topic of the, the Susies, is really, really cool in this game because unlike with Mega Man's slide, base's dash allows him to maintain dash speed outside of dashing. So you can move really, really fast horizontally throughout pretty much the entire game. Yeah, think of it like um, in Mega Man X4, 5, and 6 when you um, start up a dash, but you, like how you want to end a dash, um, you want to end with a jump so you can get more distance. Now, this is Chill Man. He's pretty chill. No, he's not chill at all. Oh, uh, he's not? No. <laughs> so he's going to use a volley of uh, buster shots into triple blades uh, to get the maximum damage on him. Uh, there's the chill spike. We do want to avoid those. And easy. Easy peasy every time. Easy if you're slurpy. So now that we have uh, the chill spike, we're going to head over to Nitro Man. Um, Nitro Man stage is really fast paced. Um, a lot of uh, climbing up ladders and such, but it introduces us to the best weapon for movement in this game, and we'll and, get to that. And an amazing song. And Yes, an amazing song. This game's whole soundtrack is honestly incredible. As a little bit of trivia, not only is it designed to emulate, you know, NES music, it was actually composed using the same limitations as the NES sound chip. And it, like, it does an incredible job as a, as a sound geek. I love Mega Man 10 soundtrack. It was, it was all made in Famatracker? I yeah, I believe it was made in Famatracker, um, a piece of software that you can use to develop NES music. So Nitro Man is a motorcycle, and as such, this stage has a bunch of cars. And another cool thing about this stage is you're going to see a lot of flat surfaces where you're going to see that um, dash into, into a uh, jump mechanic to get that really long distance. Oh. And here we're waiting for the car. Uh, no, no nope. cars will come because oh, no. I hit the stop button on it. Oh, I forgot about the stop button. <laughs> Oops. Always make sure you got to have safety for your public transportation. Yes. Doot, doot. So like that, he did it. He just did it one jump, but that was the dash jump um, mechanic for base. So what's cool about these buses, if you don't hit the stoplight, but like he just did, but if you want to stop them, you can actually chill spike them and stop them and cause them to crash into each other as well. Yeah, in, in general, Mega Man 10 did a really, really good job designing its weapon. Every weapon has something unique. None of them is just like a standard forward shot or whatever. Right. Every single weapon has some unique usage or gimmick or method to it. So this section of the stage, um, you're pretty much going to be dash jumping over it because it's 
these it's little these little platform hole floor. platform hole little stutters in the floor so now we're at nitro man um nitro man we're gonna want him to jump back turn into a motorcycle like the transformer that he is and just pretty much fill the floor with chill spikes wherever he goes it's important to note that with the chill spike we're going to be dealing more damage with the spike on the ground than the spike shot itself Perfect what a fight. well behaved boy, honestly. And also, I, a reminder that. I really that uh, have to be careful because Bass's um, arm cannon is a little bit longer than Mega Man's. So the shots actually go further than the normal. So it's really easy to hit him accidentally and stop his pattern. Reminder that uh, Nitro Man is the president of a robot stunt enthusiasts club. Gotta respect the lore, especially when they give you such good lore. <laughs> and now we got the, the controller swap again. The controller swap, and now we have the wheel cutter, which is what is going to open this speed run up, especially for vertical stages. Not only is the wheel cutter a weapon, you can just spam on mass and just tons and tons of blades flying across the screen. You can use it to climb walls at extremely high speed, which you're going to see throughout the stage. That, in combination with the treble suit and quick weapon swapping, is going to make vertical movement in this game incredibly fluid, incredibly fast, and incredibly satisfying to watch. So, these lockers in this stage are actually on a stage-wide timer, not per room for the entire stage. So Slurpee is going to be doing his best to stay as fast as possible for the entire stage, because if he gets off his rhythm, has a couple mistakes that he didn't want, he's not actually going to be able to prepare as well for the locker cycle, or he might not even be able to make an optimal cycle that he wants, and so on and so forth. So here coming up, you're going to see the wheel cutter go up, and he's going to actually use that in the next, uh, this room. He's going to do a jump into a wheel cutter and then to another jump into a wheel cutter, so. Wheel cutter's so good. But like we said, ammo's really tight in this game, so we have to really manage our wheel cutters as much as we can. And the soccer ball was not being a good boy. So most of the mini bosses in this game you see here, except for the exception of the castle and Suzak and Phoenix, is weak to the commando bomb. There we go. Got him. GG. Thanks, thanks. So there's the lockers that we're talking. Now here's the here's where you can really see it shine is up these walls. Yeah, the commando bomb, you just you just fly. It's such a cool, unique weapon. So now, Strike Man, we can actually, um, we can actually finish this fight in one cycle. But it depends on when Strike Man wants the cycle to end. So he's he's gonna throw a baseball, and he can either he can do that, which we we clap for. He did, we yeah. clap <laughs> for that indeed. Or he can uh, go into his ball mode and bounce around. Um, but the weapon we get for him is the Rebound Striker, which doesn't really look or sound like a great weapon, but you'll see in the next stage where we can get a maximum of four bounces off of a wall and completely just destroy things. What's really cool about the Rebound Striker is that every time it bounces off of a wall, it gets stronger. So not only is that just a really cool and unique way to like deal damage, it's also going to lead to a lot of really, really cool like aiming and speedrun strat development where Slurpee is going to be bouncing things off walls like seconds before bosses or enemies are in place in order to hit them for that maximum damage. Now we're on to Sheep Man. Who is a sheep? This song's great. This stage great. This robot master's great. Do not at me. Hmm? And, and, the mouse, and the mice enemy are great. This whole stage is... This, it, this, this stage, stage is rocking. Um, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, with these uh, these disappearing blocks, Slurpee is going to be doing some specific movement in order to kind of line up jumps such that he'll get as much downward momentum when going through them as possible, or, you know, across momentum in this particular case. Um, in one particular example, later in the stage, he's going to be using the wheel cutter in order to get a ton of downward momentum, just like that, fall through there. When you use the wheel cutter off of a wall like that, you actually fall faster than a neutral fall, which is really, really cool. And another thing that you'll notice is base is left and right momentum when he's falling is so much faster than Mega and Protos. It's unreal. Um, so he's going to drop two wheel cutters. That's what we were talking about earlier. Uh, we, you can spam the wheel cutter very quickly, but our main focus of damage is the uh, triple blade. So here you're going to see another uh, really awesome uh, trouble boost into climb. Yeah, the wheel cutter and the treble boost together make this game so smooth. It's amazing. I love that music. Oh, so 
So here he's going to fall down like he normally would, but he's going to skip the screen platform instead of clearing the screen like you would most of the time. And then we're on to Sheep Man. Um, Sheep Man's fight is awesome. What are you going to see? It depends on what he does. He could throw a Thunderball at the beginning, or he can go straight up and into the uh, Four Clouds phase. You're going to see Slurpee either fire one shot or immediately turn around. He's going to do the one shot method. And what the, and this is what we're talking about. He's bouncing him off the walls to get damage. Slurpee is three steps ahead of Sheep Man all the time. Look at that. So. Now we have uh, the Thunder Wool, I believe is the name of yes. the weapon. Yeah. Uh, so the Thunder Wool is not a speedrunner's favorite weapon. Admittedly, what it's going to do is put a cloud up in the sky that's going to drop a nice big thunderbolt. Uh, we will be using it for boss fights. It's going to be about it because, you know, something that's static isn't really helpful for us as we're flying across the screen. Uh, but it is going to be useful for those boss fights that it's useful for. Mega Man's 9 and 10 both did a really, really good job designing the weapons to work in a way that complements the boss fights that they're appropriate for. You're going to see that here with Pump Man. So one thing about Pump Man stage to note is um, there's a new form of Met in this uh, stage, and, you know, we all love the Met. Um, it's going to introduce a purple orb. And if that orb hits orb. you... Orb. <laughs> orb. <laughs> It's going to introduce that uh, purple orb that's going to give you ice. Those right there, that's going to give you ice physics. Um, for, for why, I don't know. It's awful. <laughs> for sludgy feet or something. Yeah, it's like sludgy it, feet. It but messes it's, with your friction. Oh. Yeah. Yep. But um, he's taking the bottom route. It's way faster than the top route. Um, so what he's going to want to do is at the, at, the, at the end of this. Oh. Oh, shrimp, please. <laughs> Shrimp, please. Mm -hmm. So um, what I was going to say was, when he goes through the section and gets to the end, base his momentum, dashing, um, he's going to want to walk off the end. And if there's spikes around, usually you want to walk off the end of his base because his momentum will literally throw you into the spikes. Yeah, we've talked about how much horizontal momentum base can have. It's both a blessing and a curse. Yes. If sometimes base is too fast, and that's uh, not good. Is there really a such thing as too fast? I don't think uh... so. To be fair, we're not the ones playing the video game, so... But yeah, right, right here, here. He's walk up glitch. Just be careful there. Yeah, It ain't worth it. That's where it's too fast. Not too fast. <laughs> mm -hmm. So now Pump Man, um, we're going to use the Thunder Cloud or Thunder Wool in a weird way. We're going to shoot it up above him and let the Thunderbolt come down. But we're going to actually do like a Mega Man 2 strat where we, sh we would shoot Wood Man with the air shooter. We're going to do the same thing with the Thunder Wool. We're going to get right in his face. And uh, uh, just shooting with that or triple blade, and that's it. Yeah, it's worth noting that the thunder itself does more damage than the cloud, but the cloud still does some, and you stack it all together, and you get a really, really smooth fight like that. Yeah, because the I, uh, thunder doesn't have I doesn't promote iframes when you're getting hit with the cloud as well. Actually, it took the the task strat. There's a there's a hard mode um, task for this game. The only the only hard mode run there is. So. I actually saw that fight in the task, and I was like, huh, maybe I can do it. Tried it for a few days, but I like, got it, and I was like, all right. Easy. Um, Easy when you're Slurpee. So now we have the water shield. This is our shield weapon of the game. Uh, the individual bubbles in the shield actually have their own individual hit properties, which is pretty neat, and you can dismiss it like you saw in the demo. Now our final robot master, Solar Man, a fitness instructor. And a lot. Enjoy the vertical movement. Lots of vertical movement. It's in this great. Thing. I don't think I would want to get instructed for fitness by Solar Man. Are you sure? I think it would be great. The it's like, solar workout. Does he do again, like in the he, lore? Does he do hot yoga or? But you would really feel the burn. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on! Wow, that was good. That was good. <laughs> Ten points. So those flowers, um, they have extremely small hitboxes, so we're just gonna be kind of tiptoeing around them. No big deal. Making, um, making careful use of our water shield. Now, here's Suzak and Phoenix. Um, what he's going to want to do is when one comes down, he's going to want to jump up and do the uh, Buster Strat and then immediately switch to Triple Blade, get right in their face for three damage, nice and that's it. Nice bird. And now here we're going to do some more vertical climbing. Neom! Enjoy this music. It's so good. This is, this is by far, besides some of the Wily stages, this is by far my favorite song in the game. More water shield. Now, he's using the water shield here to uh, dodge the fireballs. But like uh, Proto said earlier, we want to limit our uses of the water shield for Solar Man. And here we go. So this uh, this vertical section introduces the fireballs on each side. 
I tried for a frame perfect stat there, didn't get it. Oh well. So Solar Man, uh, since we're coming up to him, it, it, what you want to do is not hit him in the head. Um, I know you have water shield and water beats fire, but it's, uh, the solar above his head will actually get bigger the more you hit it, and it will deal more damage when it attacks you. And it's that easy with water shield. And that's hate robot masters. Let's head to the Wily Castle. And now I'm going to go through the uh, the castle all, all with this controller. I only needed that one for a few stages. But it's still good. Good controller. Probably worth taking a second to note that uh, Slurpee's playing on the Wii right now. Uh, for Mega Man's 9 and 10, um, I don't know offhand information about the Legacy Collection 2 releases, but for the original releases, Wii and PlayStation 3, right? Not 4. 3, three are basically the same. The Xbox version is actually like 40 seconds lower. Uh, so Wii or PS3, whatever your controller preferences, is the best go-to console for this. What's really neat about the Wii is that you can actually use the... Um, you can use stuff like the classic controller or even like the special edition SNES controllers that they released with like Club Nintendo. Um, or the same ones that you can use, get with the SNES Classic now um, that are just like basically exact reproductions of SNES controllers um, with the best D-pads out there. Shout out to the second couch. Yeah. <laughs> That's you guys. Shout out to the back couch. And uh, I love the opening scene of this Let's just enjoy this, this ambiance. music. Okay, it's over. <laughs> now time for one of the coolest uh, Wily Castle bosses in Mega Man, Weapons Archive. So there's three bosses from each Mega Man games, one through nine, in these archives. Uh, the order that they drop in is random, but it's the same three bosses in each one no matter what. You'll notice that the weapons that Slurpee is using on them, by and large, are actually really uh, correctly representative of their original weaknesses, which is a really, really nice touch. It was kind of like that the weapons were built around that gonna happen, or that happening in the game. Um, like Frodo said, it's Mega Man 1 through 9. We just do 1 through 3, then we'll do 4, 5, and 6, and then 7, 8, and 9. Um, there is a break in between them, and the, this stage theme is really good as well. Um, but I like the Wily Castle because it represents a lot from the other stages of the game, and you really don't see that often, like the disappearing blocks from Sheet Man. Um, so Mega Man 10 is so well designed. I could is. gush all day. So we're, now this is four, five, and six. Um, we're gonna see Flame Man, Ring uh, Man, Ring Man, and I'm blanking on the last one. Too. Napalm Man. <laughs> Napalm Man, that's the one. <laughs> so we're gonna hit Napalm Man with the uh, or Ring Man with the fire weapon, as we do with Pharaoh Shot and Mega Man Four, and Napalm Man with the Strike Ball, sort of similar to the the Crystal Shot in um, in Mega Man Five. No problem. Don't worry about that health meter. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're sitting at home saying, why did Wiley create um, mice enemies? Just remember, the mice on your computer could always be a bad guy. You never know. And uh, It's enemy design from where you'd least expect it. A truly genius plan. Wiley's getting good. This is, I mean, this is Safety 11. Health. Safety health. Safety health. This is like 11 world domination plots now. Like, Wiley's had some time to think about this stuff. Between 10 and 11, he really did. God, this song. Oh, God, this song is so good. More safety health. I, it is like taking every bit of willpower that I have not to just sing along right now. Y'all don't want to hear me sing, and I totally get that. <laughs> but God, this song is so good. <laughs> All right, so here's our final set of weapons archive bosses. We are going to have Frostman from Mega Man 8, Slashman from Mega Man 7, and Tornado Man from Mega Man 9. So it depends on who we get first. Okay, first so up is Slashman with the ice weapon, just like uh, Freeze Man's weapon. And then we're going to use the Mando Bomb for the Mando thrust. Bomb, and saving a little bit of ammo with Blade, and Tornado Man with the electric weapon. Because plug. And there you go, that's Wily 1. Good job, Slurpee. Thanks, man. Okay, so Wily 2 has a lot going on in it. Um, it's, got, it's got a lot of the ice barriers from Chill Spike and, or Chill Man's stage and all that. But the main thing we want to do is we don't want to die in this stage. A death in this stage will waste so much time because the crushers are on a global cycle, yes. But we can kind of know where we are when we get to that room by just waiting and watching a crusher go down. When you die, that throws that completely out the window and you, you could wait there for your crusher to go and it could just
take a, a, so much time. Yeah, so the thing is, the crushers in the stage are on a uh, roughly 11 second cycle. Um, so there are some parts of the cycle that look alike. As long as you have a general idea of where you are in the cycle, you'll be good. Uh, but if you die and things are completely thrown off, you're not going to have a good time with the crushers. Not at all. So say hello to Suzak and Phoenix again, the jerk birds. This fight is a lot easier in base than in Mega because of base is upward buster, thankfully. Yeah, because in Mega, you would have to coil and then water shield to hit them. In so this, because, you don't have to do that. So because Slurpee is on a relatively consistent path with the stage, Slurpee knows where he is in the crusher cycle right now. So he has pretty much nothing to fear. Also, shout out to Octodad part two. The dadliest mini boss. <laughs> And he's gone. That Command little quick kill is really, really smooth. You time your commando bomb just precisely so that it gets right up to the wall when the boss is uh, vulnerable, grabbing that M tank for later. This stage is terrifying. So we're coming up on our second set of crushers. And like I said, if Slurpee were to die anywhere between the first set and now, we wouldn't know where the uh, crusher cycle is. But he's been pretty consistent and on pace, so he, he could pretty much guesstimate where it's going to be more smooth movement with the treble booster. So he's going to sit here and chill and wait. Yeah, so the thing, now, now the he's thing with go. this cycle is Slurpee could go right now, but he would end up having to wait later. So by waiting now, he knows exactly where he is in the cycle. He knows he can just go. By him waiting, he has full control of the cycle at that point. So now we're going to go to the worst boss in Mega Man 10, the most- Crab uh, puncher. I won't bless the RNGs. Puncher. Crab puncher. Crab puncher. Crab puncher. <laughs> This is Crab Puncher. So um, we want this boss to stay open for as long as possible because like I was talking about earlier with the Commando Bomb, we have to keep it, we can direct it. So we want him to keep open and his eyes out as much as possible. Um, this is one of the most RNG bosses. I think we're out of Commando Bomb. Yeah. So we want to either, but we can either Thunder Wolf for double damage like that. There we go. I think worth noting with that fight is it's honestly, especially with the Commando Bomb, it's a lot more difficult than it looks. Because remember, when the Commando Bomb is moving up and then moving forward again, that is Slurpee pressing buttons on the D-pad. He has to control the Commando Bomb with the same movement inputs that he controls base with, which is a lot. So like if he were to go to dodge a punch from the Crab Puncher, he would totally throw off his Commando Bomb. I did, I did take at least like one mighty punch from the Crab Puncher. So, so this is the best song in the Wily Castle. Um, this stage is awesome. You're gonna see him go through kind of an auto scroller here, and it has the best sound effects when he presses the buttons. Yeah. Dunk, dunk. <laughs> so good. Um, you're gonna see him do kind of a little skip at the end, as Mega, you would see at the second half, do like a coil into a jet to skip it. Well, we don't really have a coil or a jet, so we kind of gotta take a little slower and just trouble boost right up. But it's a neat little auto scroller right here. So this is where I'm talking about the left and right momentum with base falling. If he were to even tap the wrong way on the D-pad, it would shoot him to the other side. Also, shout outs to Shrimp. Shout outs to Shrimp. Shrimpy. Mm -hmm. Nice little damage boost there. Uh, hey, how you doing? How you doing out there, Slurpee? Hey, how you doing tonight? Hey, guys. How's crack? <laughs> hey, second couch. How's everyone? How's everyone? Hey, there's Cab. How you doing? <laughs> hey. Oh, hey, we're back to video games. Okay. Taking a safety damage boost there, uh, just to make that extremely scary jump a little bit less scary. Still not free though. Actually, I didn't want him to uh, mess up my um, mess up my friction there. So. Yeah, because of the purple orbs. Orb. Orb. Tally's at least three runs this GDQ where we're, we're talking about orbs, and I'm all in favor of it. So this is the second half of the auto-scroller where, if you were Mega, you would see the uh, coil into Jet. But, you know, we've got treble boost, it's fine. Yeah, the <laughs> treble boost can go both horizontally and vertically, which makes it a really, really useful. I mean, you just And it saves right your there. hands at this part because you don't have to do, like, the quick weapon swap real fast. So now we have um, a boss coming up, the Block Devil. Shoutouts to Block Devil. Um, he's going to want it to, he, it's a, pretty much going to form in the same way, but he wants it to go up. And the reason he wants it to go up is so he can get the, as many bounces with a rebound striker to deal more damage. If he comes down, he can only point it at the ground and bounce it up. And we, don't, we, we would much rather get the three or four bounces versus just the one. 
Yeah. Like, it's just worth learning that the, the movement is random. Everything up to that point is consistent. So what are we going to get? We're getting, we're we're getting, getting up. up. That's good. Except he fired, so. Yeah. That's still a really Buck good fight. a little mean. You know, Buck Devil is a little mean. He's a little rough around the edges. Yeah. yeah. But like Proto said, everything's consistent in that fight until as soon as the eye comes up and clicks into the center, that's when the fight goes random. So now we got Wily 4, which is the boss rush section. Um, there's no real um, route to the boss rush because we can quick weapon swap. So what Slurpee's going to do is start at the bottom and work his way left. Um, yeah, we're just going to go in a circle. We want to move as little as possible, essentially, since weapon swaps aren't really our concern. Pretty much the same logic that you'd see in any other classic Mega, or really any other Mega with quick weapon swapping. So 7 and 8. <laughs> 11. 11, yes. So Strike Man's first. Hopefully we get the first cycle again. Yes. Good boy, Strike Man. Yeah. That is one excellent baseball there. I got so excited like it happened to me. Strike Ball is a, Strike Man is a sentient rank. pitching machine. Shout out to GoBots. And another perfect fight. So chill man, now that we have Solar Blaze, we gotta use our, uh, a limited amount of it because we gotta save it for the Wily uh, fight. But you're gonna see the, the uh, Solar Blaze weapon cancel here, positively. Oh. Uh oh, frozen. Like that. Yeah. So Slurpee wants to hit him, but as soon as that um, the orb hits and before it fans out, he wants the quick weapon swap back to Triple Blade. Yeah, Mega Man 10, um is pretty much the only game that quick weapon swapping works in that way, and it allows us to really quickly fire off more shots of a weapon in a way that I don't think was exactly intended. Uh, pretty much the same uh, Blade there Man fight as before here. Except he's being a good boy and going to the floor. Yes. That was much, that was much better behavior there. Thank you, Blade Man. Yeah, if you, if you bop him with the, uh, with the commando bomb directly, then he'll just, like, come at you, so you can just, like, Kind of manipulate a little bit. Another perfect Easy. fight. So once again, we're going to see the turnaround strat with the rebound striker in order to get more bounces. And he didn't even get to, get to go into the wolf phase. Slurpee is just on that level. Ah, uh, she made with a couple little dodges at the end there. No big deal, though. He, he juke. He pulled the wool over our eyes just a little bit. So, I like that one. Yeah! So you're gonna Someone see appreciates me. So there you go. You I just saw it. the uh, wheel cutter spam that quickly, quickly took care of Commander Man. Now we're at Pump Man. Pretty much we're gonna do another Thunder into Clouds. Yeah, so, I mean, like Slurpee said, this is literally a task fight, so it is not easy. So that was really, really good. Definitely clap for that one. So now we're Alas, here. Alas, GMATs! It be Captain Wily <laughs> on the starboard! Yar. 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 <laughs> so he's going to want to use his solar blaze here with the weapon cancel. You're going to see him weapon cancel like crazy in this first half. And there you go. So now here's where the directional shooting comes into play. Wily's going to go back and forward and then up. Easy. It's easy, it's, um, but when he comes down, we can water shield him. Wily has been foiled by his own genius designs. Truly, he was the best scientist all along. And that's literally Wily. Hmm? Or is now, who's ready to go on the best space roller coaster ride ever? Are you guys hyped for the best roller coaster ride ever? There we, there we go. Up we go. Here we go. Now, come on, everybody. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I was way too early. Oh. Sorry, <laughs> I messed it up. I love that so much. <laughs> All right, so he's going to be years and I'm not over it. <laughs> he's going to go for a manipulation here. If he plays the stage perfectly or hits the door on a certain note, um, he'll be able to predict Wiley's pattern and we'll uh, 
What we want to see from Whaley is from him to go on one side and to the other side and make shots in between to the left and to the right. That's how we know we got the pattern. So I'm going to let him focus on this. All right, let's see what we got. Time is gonna be coming up very, very soon. It's gonna be on final hit here. So our Wily capsule in this game, you have a real capsule and a fake capsule. Let's see what they're gonna do for us. That looks good. That's, that's the first part of the manipulation. Oh, Ooh. No. Not quite. No big deal. Slurpee's gonna be able to adapt on the fly, no problem, and finish this fight off. With base's high uh, maneuverability, this shouldn't be an issue at all. Wiley being a good uh, good boy right now. Time. Time. Woo! Yeah. Let's give it up for Slurpee Ninja for that incredible Mega Man 10 run. 34-31. Not a nice. time to scoff on at the all dot. whatsoever. 34-31 on the, 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 the money. Okay, you just so never like give up. a little you bit of backstory about this. Wiley accidentally, or didn't accidentally, he made the robo flu. Yeah, that was his then, evil plan this time around. And then gave it to himself. Oh, you got it. Don't, don't question it. Don't, don't, question. don't think about it too hard. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> I'll see you around. Hi. <laughs> and then a few days later, after we catch him. Yeah, he leaves us with all of the uh, medicine for the Robuenza, so... Maybe Wily had a good heart all along. No. And then Mega Man oh, 11 whoa. happened. And then Mega Man 11 happened. <laughs> GG, Slurpee. Yeah. Thanks, thanks. Thanks, you guys. This whole couch, awesome. All you guys in the back couch, everyone here. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Slurpee Ninja, for that fantastic run of Mega Man 10 there. And of course, Slurpee did get some donations in here. In fact, he got a donation in here from Grandma Sarah. $25 says, my favorite grandchild, Slurpee Ninja. May everything go smoothly in your Mega Man run tonight. Indeed it did. We also have $10 from Epic Game Music that says, I met Slurpee Ninja for the first time at MAGFest and they helped me on my Mega Man Athon run. They are probably the nicest person I've ever met. Go Slurpee. We've got a $25 donation from, we have a $25 donation from, who says we have a $25 donation from. <laughs> I'm confused. Oh my goodness. Uh, we got $100 from Kelvin Yaw, who says, thank you, hashtag AGDQ2019, for hosting another great event. Happy New Year to everybody. And $50 from Gregorio who says, this Mega Man block has been absolutely astonishing. Thank you all for everything. This goes to Chex Quest Uzmax. Of course, coming up next, the Mega Man block does continue. We've got um, Mega Man Unlimited by my man LV Creed coming up next. And of course, you all also unlocked the incentive to play Yoku Man Stage in Mega Man Unlimited. So look forward to that as well. But first, I'm going to give you a little video, a little break here for you all to check out. So don't go anywhere. The Mega Man block does continue. Of course, World 9 Gaming, from PCs to arcades and consoles, old and new World 9 Gaming aims to provide the highest quality video gaming experience to events in the Midwest and beyond. 
with our dedicated staff, tournament expertise, and expansive collection of games and consoles, World 9 is ready to take your event to the next level. So for more information on booking and upcoming events, make sure you check out world9gaming.com. So before we get going with Mega Man Unlimited, you know there's another Mega Man game, a very unique game, and some more old school. Some of y'all probably not even old enough to even remember this DOS stuff, but we've got Fiesel that's going to interview a couple of people with some upcoming games coming up. So over to Fiesel we go. Hey, everybody. I'm Fiesel, and I'm here with the runners of our DOS block. We've got Maiku Yama, who's going to be running Avoid the Noid. We have Listar, who's going to be running Mega Man DOS. So, first question, DOS, is DOS sort of like the forgotten console of the retro games? Because a lot of people had DOS, you know, back in the day, but we don't see a lot of people running DOS games now. Yeah, it kind of is. Um, even the popular DOS games back in the day weren't even, like, most of them weren't million sellers, you know, with the exception of games like Doom. Uh, or but, Lemmings, but why would lemmings. you run Lemmings? <laughs> 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 but, uh, you know, in the bad games tournament called Custo Grande, where we're kind of discovering the the depth of DOS in the as game choices for those blind races. Right, it's got a huge library, which is just why it's surprising we don't see more people. And a lot of people just got their start with that even before they had consoles, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, so Mike, uh, you've played a lot of bad games over the years. Is I'm not going to name any names, though I'm sure you could regale us with all kinds of stories. Oh, yeah. But what in particular made you pick this game up? Uh, so speaking of Cusco Grande, this is in a race. <laughs> and uh, they had me play it because um, we have four racers at a time and we didn't want to have a blank screen. Mm -hmm. So I was a quote unquote zombie racer. And while Bro Sencha and Tina Hacks were ribbing me on the race and making fun of me, I was kind of yelling and trying not to swear because it's a PG stream <laughs> as I was being very frustrated with this game. And then a month or two later, I decided to actually beat the game. And I was like, maybe this would make a fun speed run to do like for the Big Bad Game-a-thon or even Awful Games Done Quick. And I started playing around with it, and it turns out that, yes, you can actually semi-consistently beat it and avoid the noise. Well, great. So do you feel like you've successfully avoided the noid as you've played this game, or have you gotten a little more noid than you planned for? Oh, uh, that's a tough one. Uh, I would say I'm about, uh, uh, I would say I have an A minus in avoiding the Noid if I were to be graded. <laughs> that's pretty good. All right, that's pretty good. That's about my consistency rate, too. <laughs> All right, Liz, my next question is for you here. So, right. your game comes at the end of the Mega Man block, but at the beginning of the Awful Games block. Avoid the Noid comes right after yours. Obviously, a bad game. But, you know, Mega Man DOS, is it there because it's part of. The Awful Games block or because it's part of the Mega Man block? Is it an awful game or not? So every time anyone ever asked me during this week, hey, you're at the end of, of Mega Man block, right. right? I go, no, I'm the beginning of Awful Games okay, block. Okay, so you're a little above. And then, but if anyone's like, you're beginning of Awful block, right? I'm like, no, I'm the end okay, of Mega Man block. Okay, you're just not part of it. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, in my eyes, Mega Man DOS is a really fun, enjoyable game. It is also hot garbage. Uh, okay. <laughs> but I love it to death, and I'm just excited to share it. So, okay. Did you get to this game by coming from like playing a lot of awful games or a lot of DOS games or from playing a lot of Mega Man games and that kind of got you into this? Like, what direction did you push this from? It, it's the it was mostly the like a lot of a, a lot of Mega Man games. I speed run several DOS games. I'm kind of a bit of a DOS speed runner, mm -hmm. but this was never on my radar until I knew a lot of Mega Man runners and like. I mean, I got into this game completely as a joke. Mm -hmm. Just be like, oh, why is no one running this game? It looks right. amazing. And <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll show you how fun of a run it is, and then it genuinely was. So. Well, okay, and it's, I mean, Mega Man games in general, they have a certain reputation, and they have a certain style to them. Do you feel that this game is like other Mega Man games, or, or not at all? <laughs> Um, this was made by one dude who's from the West, so no. No, nope. <laughs> not at all, okay. Uh, props to him. Making one, like, making a, any kind of game, especially like a DOS game way back in 90, like, one, just by yourself, huge props to him. It's at least a competent game. I couldn't do that. Is this an official game, or? Yes, actually, okay. it wow. is an official game. There's a huge story. I'm going to tell it on, in my round. Oh, okay, all right. We won't spoil that, then. All right, well, let's take a couple of questions from Twitter. We had a lot of questions for this interview, surprisingly. <laughs> so the first one we're going to uh, take here 
is, um, are awful games more fun to run than other games, in your opinion? Right. So, Mike, you go first. Oh, uh, putting the responsibility on me. Well, uh, they're definitely more unique uh, sometimes, because, you know, you're dealing with all these really weird or bad mechanics, mm -hmm. and y you have to go in with a different mindset from a another game, because you know you're just dealing with just an unfair game. Like, you're not expecting good, consistent mechanics. So as for more fun, I would say it can be if you, if you have a certain perverted sense of humor like me. <laughs> okay, all right. Let's it, talk about you. If you're just going into it, like, ready to just joke around, like, then, yeah, uh, it's a lot of fun. I, whether or not it's, like, more fun, I think that you should kind of experience both as a speedrunner. I'm pretty sure every speedrunner has that one game that they're eyeballing and they're like, this is terrible, but I kind of love it and I kind of want to tackle it. All right, well, speaking of that one game, real, real quick, can I get your answer on this one, this oh question? Boy. Is there an awful game that's too awful to speedrun? What do you think, Mike? Ooh, uh, there's definitely awful games that I feel like are too boring to speedrun. That's the only thing that makes it not speedrunnable. Exactly. It's too boring. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, it, what do you think? So I'm the Genesis queen. I'm playing like every single Genesis game. I love the library. And there's a game called Awesome Possum oh, that no. oh, is no. so bad it literally physically assaults you because <laughs> it's like so juddery and like yeah. the frame rate jumps all over the place Oof. that it literally makes me want to throw up after an hour. And I've tried to speed run that so many times you have no idea because I love how terrible it is. It's like it wants to, you know how Bubsy really wants to be Sonic? Mm -hmm. Awesome Possum really wants to be Bubsy. <laughs> like, it's that yeah. level. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's a 2D game that can make you motion sick, maybe possibly more so than Mohawk <laughs> and Headphone Jack. Oh, great. So we'll be seeing this at SGDQ then, right? <laughs> I really, really want to. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no idea. All right. Well, I would love to talk about this stuff all day, but we have something even more important that needs to be discussed right now. Oh, oh uh-oh. And I believe our pal Scent is going to come in and tell us about, I don't know, something that rhymes with Schmrises. Um, you know, I would feasel, but Awesome Possum doesn't rhyme with schmizes. Oh, okay. I, I heard some people were bad talking my favorite possum. <laughs> How's it going, Feasel? Hi, Sent. Oh, it's good to be here. Um, guys, you know, I'm Sent as always, and I'm here to tell you about some of the amazing prizes we have uh, coming up for you. Still, we, we finish up Mega Man Block tonight with Mega Man Unlimited, and of course, the amazing Mega Man game, Mega Man DOS. Uh, but before I do, I wanted to let you all know that um, today's prize segment has been brought to you by... Oh, yeah, but this is relevant to you. Oh, what is it? Uh, today's segment has been brought to you by The Noid. Oh, you cannot no. avoid him, Uyama. He is here, <sighs> and he is waiting. And I don't have the athletic prowess of Pizza Man to, you know, somersault and dodge. Ah! <laughs> That's hideous. <laughs> I think he's kind of cute, actually. <laughs> in a hideous sort of way. In, yeah. in a hideous sort of way, yeah. But Mike's going to do his best to avoid him a little later. Yeah. Um, but real quick, guys, before I talk about some of the amazing prizes, i got to talk about one other super important thing, and that is, and Mike, you should know this as well, yeah. uh, that Games Done Quick is donating all of the revenue uh, we get from subs and bits uh, this month, the month of January, uh, to charity. So, I mean, hey, if you guys, you know, pop down a sub, that revenue, we're donating it to charity. If you donate, you know, 10 subs, 100 subs, that revenue is going to charity. Yeah. And if you have Twitch Prime, you have Amazon Prime, if you got one, you got the other, and... Uh, that means you have a free sub you can use every month, and the streamer still gets the full amount of revenue. So, hey, if you got Amazon Prime, you got Twitch Prime, you got a free sub, you can give that free sub to GDQ, we'll donate that revenue to charity. Bam, that simple. Uh, but if you guys are thinking of more of a direct donation, we have plenty of amazing prizes you guys can win. Let me tell you about a couple of them. Uh, so from, our friend, from our friend Star Salts, we have a beautiful little Russian enamel pin, $5 uh, from now until the end of Mega Man DOS, which is the official end of Mega Man Block, of course. Um, super cute. Rush is also a good boy. I mean, th this is just fact. He, he is the best doggo and the best machine doggo. Um, from Blizzstar, actually, right next to me, we have a beautiful collection of Mega Man DOS Perlers. Um, we, we, got, we got all the Mega Man DOS Perlers. We got uh, Something Man. Sonic yeah. Man. <laughs> sure, great. Uh, we got, we got Dynaman. Vault Man. Close enough. Uh, we got the guy that isn't Vault Man. Dynaman. All right, I got one of them right. And we got uh, th that. <laughs> y yes, exactly that. These are, without a doubt, the only copies of these that ever exist. And if anyone else tries to do it, 
they might be cursed. So and get them while you can. Hopefully that ever <laughs> will exist. $10 donation from now until the end of Mega Man DOS. We also have a beautiful Mega Man X Perler uh, from Boss Level Pixel Art. Also $10 from now until the end of Mega Man DOS. Uh, from our good friend Dot Decor, we have this quite stunning Dot-based uh, Mega Man piece. Ooh. It's made up of a bunch of little circles. Um, it's a super cool art style. Looks great. I love it. $15 from now until the end of Mega Man DOS. You guys have seen it kind of in the background of our, uh, of our set here. We have a beautiful Mega Man X throw pillow from our friend Iggy Zig. $10 from now until the end of Mega Man DOS. Get those donations in. On the uh, corner uh, shelf behind Mike, we have two Mega Man Classic cartridges. They are official reproductions produced by I Am 8-Bit with permission from Capcom uh, to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Mega Man. $20 donation from now until the end of Mega Man DOS. Make sure to get them. Uh, also back there, we have that beautiful Mega Man 10 title cross-stitch. Ah, cross um, I mean, it's great. I'm probably going to leave it there all week. It looks amazing. $15 from now until the end of Mega Man DOS. We also have a beautiful Octopath Traveler Teresa shadow box. You can see a great picture of it over on our website by heading over to gamesdonequick.com and checking out the tracker. And guys, how could I forget, on the table, we have this amazing Samurai Zero figure from our good friend Jay Store. This thing is absolutely beautiful, handcrafted, one of a kind. I, I love it. It looks amazing. Here, I'm going to spin it around for you real quick. Don't worry about the plywood. It's just mounted to that to make it easier to ship. And it is a $40 minimum donation from now until the end of Mega Man DOS. So hey, make sure to get those donations in. Remember, those donations are also getting you on your way to being entered into our grand prize drawing for the amazing one-to-one -one replica of a Master Sword and a Hylian Shield that's been behind us all week. Those things are amazing. Guys, you want to win them. They're one of a kind. They're handmade. They're full metal. They're something you want. Um, and I think that's just about going to do it for me. As always, you can head over to gamesdonequick.com. You can check out the tracker. It's going to have all the information you guys need on upcoming uh, games, speedruns, prizes, noids, anything involving the marathon that you could ever care about. Fiesel, thanks for having me here. All right, thank you, Sent. And I'd like to thank our two runners, Michael Yama and Liz Starr, who are going to be running their games up after this next game, which is Mega Man Unlimited being run by LV Creed. Good luck with your runs, you two. And let's throw it back over there to the host. Thank you for that, Fiesel. Again, after the Mega Man block ends, or maybe after it continues, you know, Mega Man DOS, avoid the Noid. And of course, another incident that was met virtual hot a lot, 101%. And of course, the, the spike inspired Urban Yeti. So there's a lot of good, bad, or is it bad, good stuff coming up in the late nine hours. But first, let's play a good game. How about that? We've got.